After a summer long effort gorging on salmon, berries, and other foods, brown bears at Brooks River in Katmai National Park in Alaska have reached peak fat. Bears get fat to survive, and fat is the fuel that powers their ability to endure the months long famine that is winter hibernation. What challenges did the bears of Fat Bear Week experience in their efforts to gain body fat? And how did the bears find success this year? Those are questions we'll investigate as we reveal the contenders and the bracket for the 2023 Fat Bear Week competition, an event brought to you by Katmai National Park, the Katmai Conservancy, and explore.org. My name is Mike Fitz. I'm the resident naturalist with explore.org. And joining me today are Katmai National Park Rangers, Felicia Jimenez and Naomi Boak. Rangers, it's great to see you both here today. I do have an initial question for both of you, though. And I'm wondering, maybe, Naomi, I'll start with you first. On a scale of one to 10, with one representing 747's belly, five representing a spring cub's appetite for milk, and 10 representing the stomach capacity of Otis, how excited are you for Fat Bear Week? Oh, and I think you're on mute, Naomi. Oh, no. <laughs> There we go. I'm at a 10 because right. <laughs> I think I think this is going to be a really fun Fat Bear Week. What about you, Felicia, on that scale? <laughs> I'm an Otis tummy, too. I'm not a 10. This is going to be really fun. <laughs> it's certainly going to be an exciting Fat Bear Week and uh, an unpredictable one, I believe. We're going to go through the uh, contenders for Fat Bear Week. We're going to introduce the event to everybody. Uh, and, and give you, I think, some fodder to campaign for who you think is the fattest and most successful bear of the year. If you're watching on explore.org right now as well, uh, Ranger Chris Kleesrath is in the comments and questions there. So if you're in the live chat on explore.org, look for Chris. She'll help you to answer questions. Uh, so as we get started here, let's introduce the bears of Fat Bear Week and the event. And Felicia, I think we should just start with that simple question. What is Fat Bear Week? Fat Bear Week is a celebration of success, adaptability, and resilience in our brown bears. Um, bears need to get fat to survive winter hibernation, and Katmai's pristine ecosystem is what allows that to happen because we protect um, this beautiful pristine ecosystem that sustains that salmon run where bears get really fat. Um, it is a tournament style bracket and we pit bears in head to head matches to see which one is the fattest one and you the public get to vote on your favorite fat bear. And each year about 80 years, or excuse me, about 80 bears on average have been identified at Brooks River. Uh, and that's, you know, on average over the last 20 years. Last year, there was more than 90 different bears, not including cubs, documented at the river. So there's a lot of bears to choose from. And Naomi, that's, you know, I think that can make choosing the bears for Fat Bear Week uh, a hard decision. So how are you choosing which bears make the cut? Yeah, well, we choices begin at the beginning of the season. Um, so first, a uh, bear has to demonstrate success at gaining a lot of weight um, so that they can become fat enough for hibernation. Um, and as interpretive rangers, those of us who choose the bears, um, we're always looking for a good story. So fatness isn't everything. We want bears who have shown us a, a new way of getting fat or that they've overcome obstacles. We want this bracket to be filled with good stories. And the other determining factors are the bears have to show up because some bears show up only in the beginning of the season and others show up only at the end of the season. And then we have to get good pictures of them, which is why I say we, we start the very beginning of the season working on Fat Bear Week. So um, if we don't have a good skinny photo and if the bears don't come out of the water and stop fishing for a second at the end of the season, Sorry, no fat bear week. And some bears are particularly challenging to get good photos of late mm -hmm. in late in summer because they're in the water or sleeping on the riverbanks so much. Felicia, it's going to be hard, I think, for a lot of people to choose which bear they want to vote for 
this year in many of the matchups. But if you're uh, for our prospective voters, how can they vote for Fat Bear? Yeah, so there will be six days of voting. We'll take a break on Sunday. Um, but every day, you'll log into fatbearweek.org. Um, you'll see the matchups for the day. You can look at the skinny and the fat photo. You can read the bios of the bears that are being matched up. Um, and then you just cast your vote. Um, and ultimately, will be new matches every day. And voting is only part of the equation in Fat Bear Week. You know, again, deciding who to vote for is an open question. There's a lot of different factors, too, that lead to success in brown bears. Fat Bear Week is that opportunity to consider uh, not only who you think got fat, but is also, uh, you know, the most successful Brooks River bear of the year. Every bear faces challenge in its effort to get fat before winter. Happens. So, they'll, so although gaining ample body fat is the goal for bears in the road to the, the road to success can be very different for each one so in short fat bear week is a subjective competition not only should you consider body fat but also a bear story and experiences and i invite everybody and i know the rangers do as well to campaign for their fat bear week candidate in the bear camp chats on explore.org and you can also do that using social media with the hashtag fat bear week be polite of course but don't be shy you know, let the world know who you think is most deserving of the vote. And to help you decide, let's meet the Bears of Fat Bear Week 2023. 12 Bears make the tournament, and we'll introduce each one of them one by one. Felicia, our first contender is the youngest bear in the bracket. His story showcases the risk and reward that young bears experience nearly every day. Yeah, so our first bear up in the bracket is going to be Bear 806 Jr. He is a spring cub. Um, he is the biggest cub voted by the public on the river right now. He's massive and fluffy um, and has the advantages of being a single cub in his litter, um, which is what, you know, contributed to his massive tank <laughs> size. Um, he's also had some challenges throughout the season. Um, he has tried to stay close to mom all season. And if you've been watching on the cams, you've seen him swept away, um, you know, off of the falls. He had a run in with a male and mom put male, the male in his place. Um, and he has just been getting so fat. He has a huge transformation. And as the winner of the Fat Bear Junior competition, he gets to go up against the big boys in the adult bracket. So cheer on your favorite chunky cub. Um, and let's see what he'll show us. <laughs> so that's our first contender in Fat Bear Week. But uh, there's a bear that's matching up against uh, 806's cub that's also very young. In fact, our second youngest bear in the competition is a sub-adult bear. Sub-adult bears are independent juvenile bears. They face and must overcome the difficulties brought by family breakup and life near the bottom of the bear hierarchy. So in my mind, that's the story of our next bear in the competition, Bear 428. 428 is a, a pudgy 3.5-year-old sub-adult bear. She has blonde ears and grizzled light brown fur. Uh, and uh, she's the offspring also of number 128 Grazer, which is uh, a bear with a perennial presence at Brooks River. As a dominant mother bear, Grazer provided her cubs with consistent access to productive fishing spots at Brooks Falls. So as a yearling and a two and a half year old cub, 428 followed her mother's lead. She took to the lip of the falls to practice fishing in a location that younger bears are often displaced from by larger bears. She had a bit of a head start in those locations. But after Grazer separated from 428 and 428's sister earlier this year, suddenly the former cubs didn't have a guide or protect her. 428 had to utilize the lessons she learned from mother while forging her own path and facing difficulties of, uh, of life at the bottom of the hierarchy. As an independent bear, she's in the river without mother's guidance for the first time this summer. The consistent access to the lip of the falls and other productive fishing spots were uh, no longer something that she could expect. This summer though, she navigated the new challenges brought by a life of independence she utilized opportunity as it came, even if opportunity for her came in consistently. 
So our voters will choose between two very young bears in the first matchup this year. Voters will choose between 806's tank of a cub or find that 428's <laughs> waistline is worthy of the vote. I'm not sure who's going to win that matchup. That's the first one in the first round on October 4. Staying in that corner of the bracket, the winner of the cub and subadult match will face a formidable opponent. He's one of the largest, <laughs> most dominant bears at Brooks River. I've described him as enigmatic in the past, but this year he was in full dominance mode and his low hanging belly bears the fruit of his success. Naomi, who is he? He's the bear with the scar, the bear that lives up to his name, 32 Chunk. Yeah, he, his, he, how do you talk about Chunk? He's enormous. <laughs> This 18 year old boar is a light bulb shaped leviathan of a bear. I mean, since his early teens, he's been a really big bear. I mean, he's a, been a bear to watch in terms of size and also because of um, his potential dominance in the hierarchy. And I remember years ago uh, when this bear was much more playful and would spend hours play fighting with 89 backpack. Uh, someone named Mike Fitz said that we had to watch this bear because he was going to get so big that he might be a real force on the Brooks River. So um, in 2023, 32 Chunk has not disappointed. He's outdone himself in growing his girth, and he's grown from a playful subadult to be one of the most dominant bears on the river. So this is going to be a tough battle for those two young bears be up against Chunk. <laughs> He's such a fun bear to watch. And it's only, you know, by observing his full range of behaviors that we can get a true sense really of his individuality. And Chunk really does loom large in the Fat Bear Week competition. On Friday, October 6th, that's when he'll face the winner of the match between the 806 Cub and 428. So that's our first corner of our bracket. Our second first round match begins on Wednesday, October 4th. Cubs are not who you'll be voting for directly in this match, although they are definitely part of the story for our next two bears. In particular, the bear that I'll introduce in our second round match has led a life that continues to illustrate the triumphs and difficulties of a long-lived mother bear. So let me introduce you to Bear 402. She is a large adult female with medium brown fur and tan-colored claws. Her 2023 before and after photos tell a, a story of an experienced older mother bear. Uh, 402 was first identified in 2001 as a three and a half year old bear. So she was then at the same life stage as uh, 428 who we introduced earlier. And, but oh, since that time, really, if there's one single word I can use to describe 402, it is experience. She is the mother of at least eight litters, more than any other bear currently at Brooks River. This includes two litters of four cubs apiece. This year, as you see in these clips, she's returned to the river with a single yearling cub. 402, she's a skilled angler. She can fish successfully in many locations. Her fishing experience is especially valuable during years when she has cubs and when salmon are not particularly abundant, which we saw at times in early summer at Brooks River this year. For the last few weeks, 402 and her yearling have been a frequent presence near the river mouth. This is a place she knows well, and she sets her cubs up with success by demonstrating how to make a living here. As 402 enters her late 20s, she's demonstrated again and again how to provide for the welfare of her cubs in a challenging and competitive environment. Several of her former cubs are speculated to use the river as young adults right now. And Felicia, while 402 is an experienced mother with multiple litters on her resume, she faces some pretty tough competition in this first round match. In fact, she faces a much younger bear in the first round, and her opponent is experiencing bear motherhood for the first time. Yes, this juxtaposing battle is going to be against bear 901. She is a first time mother this year. Um, we're going to pit the most experienced mom against a brand new mom. She has two cubs. Um, she 
has experienced some hardship this year. She originally arrived in early summer with three spring cubs. Um, and then later on, um, you know, earlier, later on in the summer, um, she ended up, the third one disappeared. Um, we haven't seen that cub since, and since now she has two cubs. Um, so her story is going to show the challenges that new mothers face. Last year was her first time in Fat Bear Week, and she is making a return this year. Um, and you'll get to see the transformation that she's made from early summer, um, having to support three spring cubs to now. Um, so it's a really, really good juxtaposition, and I love this pair a lot. <laughs> She's been a favorite of Bear Camp fans uh, all summer, of course, with those three cubs uh, at the beginning of summer and still caring for two at the end of summer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, another tough choice, I think, between Bear 402 and number 901. There's one more bear to introduce before we move to the second half of the Fat Bear Week bracket. He's a perennial fan favorite who will meet the winner of the 402 and 901 match. Despite the difficulties and rigors of old age, he continues to get the job done through his knowledge, his skill, and his patience. Naomi, who are we talking about? Well, I get to introduce the bear who needs no introduction. That's bear 480 Otis. And those two female bears, one of them's gonna have some tough competition from this guy. <laughs> he is the winner of the original Fat Bear Tuesday and the three and three time winner of Fat Bear Week. Um, he's a fan favorite and always a bear to contend with in this contest. contest. Um, at around 27 years old, he's one of the oldest bears on the river and um, he's a wise and patient angler. Um, he really is a survivor. I mean, we weren't sure that he was gonna come back this year, but maybe we should have learned something from Otis's patience and been a bit more patient um, ourselves in expecting him to come back. Um, Otis arrived in late July skinnier and, and more frail than I think we've ever seen him. So it was really a bit worrisome. Um, but in short order, Otis, the amazing angler that he is, used his zen-like style of fishing and he was catching up to 20 fish a day. There was a bear, bear cam fan who was keeping track of Otis's daily catch. Um, so um, as you can see in those fat photos, Otis really did a job. Um, he moves less to catch more and become again, one of the biggest bears on the river. So um, again, 480 Otis, a contender. Yeah, it could be another another good year for Otis in Fat Bear Week this year. And that's the first half of our Fat Bear Week bracket. First round voting opens at 12 p.m. Eastern on October 4. Now, as we move on to the right-hand side of our bracket, we're going to look at some true heavyweights. I think especially in that upper right corner, maybe uh, that's collectively the 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 most massive corner of all and voting for these bears starts on october 5. Uh, felicia it includes one of the most recognizable skilled and toughest female bears at brooks river oh yeah so in this corner we're going to have the beautiful bear with those gorgeous iconic blonde ears bear 128. um grazer is a tough female um, in regular life. She is going to be tough to beat this year. Um, she has been putting in the work. She was quite dainty um, in early summer, but now she is huge. Um, she has a reputation as a tough bear, especially as a tough mom. Um, this year, she separated from her two three and a half year olds. Um, one of them is going to be on the other side of the bracket, and then the other one, 429, is an independent sub adult now. And so she has been on her own this year, and not having to provide for cubs this year is certainly an advantage to females. Um, she hasn't had to worry about providing for anybody but herself. Um, and so she has really made some massive gains. She is a big bear um, and it's going to be a really interesting battle to see um, who she is up against. 
Yeah, I, and she does I always face uh, a, a real life rival, right, Naomi? Yeah, well, I, I, um, one of the things about Grazer that I always like to watch is she grows into her ears. They look massive at the beginning of the season, and not so big at the end of the season because she gets they get so big. But she's got a big rival, and that is Bear One Five One Walker. And um, these two pair off in the in the office for fishing, and um, they are rivals there, and they are rivals in the bracket. Um, Walker is 16 years old, which means he's just coming into his prime. Um, I've always thought of Walker as a very kind of careful and shy bear. He'd spend over half the season getting fat by fishing the riffles where really he doesn't have a lot of competition from the really big bears. Um, he'd play fight with other young adults, but you know, with um, age, comes uh, competitiveness and um, this bulked up bear is shy no more. He's competing for prime fishing spots on the lip, in the office and at the conveyor belt. Um, really great places to catch fish like you just see him catch right there. Um, and these are choice spots for the most dominant bears. So Walker, now that he's in his prime, he likes to throw his weight around and sometimes he's successful and sometimes he's not. But he really has earned his his spot in this weighty competition. So um, one five one Walker, go for it. Yeah, he's a light bulb of a bear. Really fun bear to watch along Brooks River. Dominant, successful, and I think. Uh, the Grazer versus Walker match is a really tough choice for many people. They are real life rivals on the river competing for many of the same fishing spots. The winner uh, between Grazer and Walker will face a true giant on October 7th. He's been called the Bear Plane, Bear Force One, an absolute unit, and the Incredible Bulk. Few bears will ever grow as large as the bear who shares an identification number with a jet airplane. I'm talking about the defending Fat Bear Week champion, none other than Bear 747. Since 2004, when 747 was first identified, he has become one of the largest brown bears on earth. A few years ago, he was estimated to weigh about 1,400 pounds in September. That's more than 600 kilograms. I'm not sure he's that big this year, and Chunk actually might be bigger than him this year, but he still remains a giant of a bear. And his before and after photos from 2023 illustrate that he worked hard to prepare for hibernation. A bear can't get as big as 747 with, without being a good angler. And 747 is excellent at that task. In a way, his size and fishing skills create a feedback loop. He is so big that few other bears challenge him for fishing spots. He remains so big because he has easy access to or easy and consistent access to fishing spots. But, and there's always a but when we're talking about bears. So we're gonna talk about 747's big butt for a moment because big <coughs> bears face big challenges. 747 faced consistent challenges from other large males like 856 and 32 chunk th this year. That contrasts with last summer when 747 was more dominant than both rivals. So. Does this signal that 747 is feeling the effects of age? He, he's more than 20 years old after all, or might he have determined that challenging Chunk in 856 wasn't worth the effort when he still had access to many productive fishing spots? I'm not sure, but with his fishing skill and rank near the top of the hierarchy, advantage comes to 747 in ways that not all bears experience, even if it sometimes does come with some difficulty and some competition. You can vote for the match between Bear 747 and the winter, the winner of Grazer and Walker on Saturday, October 7. We have uh, one more corner of the bracket to introduce. Uh, competition and hunger are two challenges that every bear faces, and the next two bears have found their own ways to navigate those hurdles. Felicia, we're talking about maybe first to introduce uh, uh, an experienced mother bear who has a long legacy at Brooks River. 
Yeah, so in this next corner, um, a Thursday match is going to be up against 284. Um, she does come from quite a long legacy, a beloved legacy within uh, Katmai National Park. She's pretty distinct. Um, she has this very distinct shoulder hump. Um, it's like makes her easy to ID from, um, you know, she walks on the beach quite a bit and I can always tell it's her by that giant hump. Um, she comes from a very long legacy. She's the mother of one of our Fat Bear Week contenders right now, Bear 901. Um, and her mom is Bear 708 Amelia. Um, so she's quite an experienced mom. Um, she is a single bear this year. Um, she's also going to benefit the same way that Grazer has in being a single bear, only providing for herself. She's made some really good gains. She looks really big, um, pretty massive. It makes me really happy when I see this bear. Um, and she uh, is going to be a great match up against the next bear um, in this bracket. <laughs> well, the next bear in this bracket um, is, um, I'd say, smarter or more innovative than your average bear. And that's bear 164. He's um, a six-year-old young adult and sometimes known as Bucky Dent by his fans because he has some fur in between his eyes and on his brow um, that makes it look like a dent. Um, and um, innovation is uh, his uh, byword because he's found a place to fish successfully where no other bear has dared to fish before, right under the lip of the falls where he's in front, he's underneath some of the most dominant bears on the river and he's fishing right next to the jacuzzi where the, the most dominant bears of the river like to fish, bears like 747 and 856. And through his innovation and his fishing skills, 164's size has increased enormously. And um, I mean, it's re it was really hard for me to believe how big he got this year. I mean, he's young, he's only six years old. So he is a worthy contestant in Fat Bear Week. Um, we like smarts and innovation. That matchup is another really difficult choice. 284 versus 164 is um, a, a fitting end, I think, to our first round matchups. 284 is part of that matrilineal legacy of mother bears at Brooks River that goes back many generations. 164 shows that through innovation can carve themselves a unique niche. So vote for that match on Friday, uh, October, excuse me, Thursday. <laughs> yeah, uh, this Friday, or excuse me, this Thursday, um, just so I don't mess anything up about the dates this Thursday for sure. And one more space remains in the Fat Bear Week bracket, and it's filled with the, the beautiful figure of a bear that looks like a toasted marshmallow. 435 Holly has shown that experience and uh, to adapt lead to longevity, success, and fatness among bears. Holly is a, a story that contains many different chapters in her life. Uh, it's, it can sometimes be filled with hardship, but also surprises and success. She's raised an injured yearling cub in 2007. Uh, that Yearling bear is now known as 89 Backpack, and he continues to use Brooks River as an, a large adult male. We saw him on the cameras just the other day. When Holly adopted a lone yearling cub into our family. She cared for that cub and uh, her biological cub that summer, weaned them both in the spring of 2016. Each of those bears are now successful adults, known as 503 and 719. 719 actually has a, a yearling that she was raised in on the river, on the river this year. Holly Spring Cub in 2020. I'm going to continue the story of difficulty and success with Holly. Uh, in 2020, that uh, bear suffered from porcupine quills in its front paw, but Holly was able to successfully care for that, that cub despite its ailment. And when the, the, the family returned in 2021, her cub appeared to be fully healed. Uh, this year, Holly returned to Brooks River as a single bear. So like Grazer and like 284, who we introduced earlier, She's leading a bachelorette's life right now, and it's afforded her the opportunity to concentrate on her own needs. But like other single female bears, she'll need ample body fat to survive winter hibernation and potentially give birth to a new litter of cubs in the den. She was the 2019 Fat Bear Week champion, and she looks amazing this fall too. 
I'm curious to see how far voters will carry her full figure in the competition uh, this year. So that is our 2023 Fat Bear Week bracket. Bears work hard to take advantage of this bounty and gain enough fat to survive winter hi hibernation. Each bear in Fat Bear, Fat Bear Week is a unique specimen of success. Uh, Rangers, it's a competitive bracket this year. Some really difficult choices. Uh, and we have a little bit more to talk about. But before we do that, I do want to get to some predictions right now. I'm curious to know which bears you think might go to the finals. So, um, Felicia, I'll, I'll throw this one to you first. Uh, what do you think is going to happen in Fat Bear Week? Um, so there, oh, there's a couple of bears that I really want to back. Um, I think 32 chunk is arguably one of the largest, like the largest bear on Brooks river. Um, he's huge. Um, and we've seen the, you know, shifts in the hierarchy this year and it's very exciting. So it would be really, really cool to see that echo with that bear week this year. Um, but I also think the ladies could give the males a run for their money. We've got some really, really big ladies. Um, 128 is looking super good. Um, she hasn't won a fat bear week yet. And I think this could be a year where she could really shine. And uh, 435 Holly is looking amazing. Um, so I don't know, maybe the ladies could give the males a run for their money. <laughs> what about you, Naomi? Well, um, Felicia and I are thinking along the same lines. Um, uh, my heart is with the multitasking moms, whether they've got cubs or not, because um, they have to spend more energy to take care of their cubs and get fat and they have to get fat to have cubs. So, you know, I, I really, I root for them. Um, and I agree, Holly looks amazing. I mean, we didn't see her for a lot of the summer and she came back fat and kept getting fatter and fatter and fatter. So um, she is really up there. I think you can't ignore the fan favorite 480 Otis. I mean, his transformation is just miraculous. I mean, the skin and bones that arrived on the river and the healthy bear that is now still fishing on the river. Um, I think we can't ignore him, but I agree with Felicia that 32 chunk is a monster. I mean, he, he is in my mind, the, the biggest bear on, on the river, but, um, you know, I don't know how people are going to vote. Sometimes they don't vote for the biggest bear in the river. There are many factors to consider. Well, and I thought long and hard about who I think could go to the finals this year, you know, and for a long time, bear camp fans have teased me of having a 747 bias. And, you know, you look at his before and after pictures and he's been doing really well for himself again this year. Uh, but this year I'm going with Grazer. So I'm throwing my official endorsement into Grazer's camp. She's the best angler at Brooks River and one of the absolute toughest bears that I have ever seen. Uh, but the biggest but though might be along the chunk. So based on the before and after photos, I think this <laughs> looks like chunks here. Uh, so no matter what the voters choose, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Naomi, can you remind everyone how to participate in Fat Bear Week? Sure. Um, your polling place is fatbearweek.org. And um, there you will see comparison pictures of bears when they were skinny in the beginning of the season and fat at the end of the season. And um, click on your bear of choice enter your email address, only vote once. Um, and uh, remember that today and tomorrow, um, there are two head-to-head -head matches. So don't forget to vote for both of them. And um, if you want to learn more about the bears as you've come to campaign and root for them, um, there are links on fatbearweek.org that um, tell you more about the bears' stories and their histories. And we do have um, other live events associated with Fat Bear Week this year. Felicia, what's, what's in store? 
Yeah, so the next live event that's going to happen um, is going to be a live chat on Wednesday, the Welcome to Fat Bear Week live chat, as uh, Mike says, same bear time, same bear place. Um, so 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific at um, the live chat channel on explore.org. Um, and then we're also going to have um, the Fat Bear Week in the Classroom videos. Um, those are going to premiere and they're going to post on the Fat Bear Week website um, later on this week, I think tomorrow. Um, so tune in for those two events um, in the next upcoming days. And then we have a play-by-play -play coming up on Thursday um, at 7 p.m. Eastern time as well. And a few other things that we're going to be tossing out here and there uh, throughout Fat Bear Week. As we conclude today, we would be remiss to not talk about one more thing associated with fat bears at Brooks River in Katma National Park. We have to give a shout out to the true sponsors of Fat Bear Week. <laughs> None of this would be possible without salmon. They are the heartbeat of Katmai's ecosystem. And Naomi, we can see on the cams right now that salmon are showcasing their importance to brown bears. Yeah. Well, I, you know, when people think of the Brooks River, they think of this image of the, the salmon jumping the falls um, at the height of the sockeye salmon run. But I want to talk a little bit about the contribution that salmon make in the late season. I mean, salmon um, are, are sacrificing their lives for the next generation. And um, when they are done spawning, and um, have laid eggs and the eggs have been fertilized, they die. But even after death, they are helping the bears survive. And, and we have one really great story about that this year. Um, bear 708, Amelia, bear 284's mother, um, is usually a very, very fat bear in, in the end of the season. And she arrived, um, in July with um, three spring cubs. She, she looked okay, not very fat. Um, she left Brooks River to, to fish someplace else where there, it would be easier fishing for her. Um, she came back in mid-September and I couldn't recognize her. She was so skinny. I thought that couldn't be 708 Amelia. I mean, she's always fat in the fall and um, and if you see her now, I mean, she is fat enough to survive hibernation and her cubs look good. And that happened because she was able to catch the dead and dying salmon, the spawned out salmon in the river. So it may be wonderful to watch those salmon jumping the falls and see all those, you know, healthy calories that the, the bears catch, but they are still getting nutrition after the salmon have sacrificed their lives. So it proves that even as salmon sacrifice their lives for the next generation in death, they help the bears survive. And of course, there's an incredible ecology associated with sockeye salmon, not just related to the bears. But Felicia, I know that this is uh, something that you love to talk about and you love to read about, but uh, the salmon contribute to the productivity of the entirety of the ecosystem in the area. Yeah, salmon are the keystone species in the Katmai ecosystem. And um, one of my favorite things about Fat Bear Week um, is that not only do we have some of the biggest bears in the world, we also have one of the last great salmon runs left on the planet. So I get to talk about not one, but two superlatives when I'm talking about Katmai's ecosystem. Um, and getting to talk about that um, is always brings a reminder of why Fat Bear Week is such a celebration because, you know, without the salmon, we wouldn't have our fat bears. Um, but it also just highlights that the way, like the salmon run in Katmai in the Bristol Bay watershed is not what the salmon run looks like in a lot of other places in the world. Um, through all different kinds of um, reasons, maybe, you know, damming of rivers, um, ecosystem degradation, the salmon runs are not as doing as well. Um, but because Bristol Bay's watershed is protected, um, our, you know, salmon run looks really, really good. Um, and that's something that I like to draw attention to during Fat Bear Week. And it makes me really happy, but also stresses the importance of protecting that ecosystem so we can continue to have this. 
Absolutely. One of the most eye-opening experiences for me in Katmai was seeing how the entire landscape is crucial to the survival of abundant salmon. Mm -hmm. You want to have large salmon runs, you have to have intact watersheds. Uh, in, in excluding the rare instances where there are, impa are impassable waterfalls, the Brooks River is not impassable to salmon. Salmon can jump that fairly easily. Every stream in the Brooks River in Naknek Lake watershed has salmon in it. You'll find fish spawning in Savanovsky River in November after the glaciers that fed it slow down for the winter and the waters of that river clear. You'll find tens of thousands or more of salmon spawning in the mile and a half long Brooks River. And then hundreds of thousands of fish migrating through Brooks River every summer. Even streams that are only a few feet wide and a few inches deep uh, in Katmai uh, contain spawning salmon and juvenile salmon. So we can't forget that it's, it's Katmai's um, entire landscape, including those undeveloped lakes that support hundreds of millions of young sockeye salmon every year before they run out to sea. It's enti Katmai's entire landscape that is supporting these healthy and abundant runs of, of salmon. And that contrasts with the great number of imperiled salmon in, in different parts of, of salmon runs in different parts of North America. But Katmai in Bristol Bay show us what salmon runs should be. They should not be endangered. They should thrive. Our baseline, our historical basis for judging the health and abundance of salmon, it should be what we see in Bristol Bay right now. So I want everyone to remember this and remember what salmon runs can be, what they should be. It is uh, Bristol Bay, it is sockeye salmon in its abundance. It is the fat bears that we see at Brooks River. And Rangers, as we celebrate the salmon, the bears and their success in 2023 during this fat bear week, how can people help to ensure that bears and salmon have a, a healthy future? Uh, what do you think, Naomi? Well, I mean, one thing people can do is to be conscious of the effects of climate change. I mean, it's here, the Arctic is a bellwether for uh, changes in the climate. Um, and, um, and that could, in some ways, destroy that healthy ecosystem that we've been talking about. And um, one thing you can do is to be very conscious of how you affect climate change. What is your impact upon the climate in how you live your life? Um, and um, it's we, we just can't ignore it. And um, the other thing you can do is um, protect the ecosystems where you live. I mean, we, we love the Brooks River. We, we love all the salmon in the many rivers in Katmai National Park and we are celebrating them this week. But we all live in places where there are different healthy ecosystems that could be endangered by climate change, by human beings. Um, so protect the place where you live as well, and that helps protect the entire planet. Hey, Felicia, um, I know that you have ideas about this as well. How can, how can people help bears? Yeah, um, so definitely when you think about climate change, um, people want things that they can do on their own. Um, some things that you can do, especially if you want to support Bristol Bay, is, you know, um, make sure that you're sourcing your salmon um, from sustainable um, catch practices. The wild caught, uh, sustainably caught Bristol Bay sockeye salmon is a good one. Um, and then also think about what you can do in your own area so you know we're talking about cat my bears but there's also things that you can do you know within your own scale to protect bears either at home or if you do go out um you know take a vacation go hiking in bear country make sure you do some bear safe practices um carry you know bear barrels um, we want to make sure that bears even in your local area are not habituated to humans we want to keep bears wild um, and that's how you protect bears in your own area. Yes, I absolutely hope that, you know, the love of bears that, um, that, that people share amongst each other by watching the webcams that translates into wanting to protect wildlife no matter where you happen to be. And of course, one additional way that you can help um, Katmai's bears is by joining us in a fundraiser starting on Wednesday. Explore.org will match donations to the Katmai Conservancy during Fat Bear Week. It's called the Otis Fund. 
that money will go directly to supporting the work of the National Park Service to protect and manage Katmai National Park, including its bears and salmon. You can find out more about this effort at katmaiconservancy.org. We also have links to the fundraiser on Explore.org, um, and we, or we will have links to that on Explore.org and on our social media channels. You can also help, of course, just by sharing your love of Katmai and its bears uh, with other people. Uh, Fat Bear Week is a great way to do that. So no matter who you vote for in Fat Bear Week, please consider what it takes for bears to achieve peak performance. Think about the work and skill necessary to find and eat a year's worth of food in about six months. Fat is the fuel that powers a brown bear's wintertime survival. Each bear understands it is working against the clock in order to gain the fat reserves needed to survive winter. The Fat Bear Week is that opportunity for us to consider the challenges bears face in order to survive. It gives us the chance to weigh the competition and marvel at their success, as well as the health and productivity of Katmai's ecosystem. Rangers, it's been great to talk with you today. Uh, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah, and vote. Absolutely, yeah. Do your, your civic duty, people, and vote in <laughs> Fat Bear Week. My co-hosts today for our Fat Bear Week bracket reveal were Katmai National Park Rangers, Naomi Boak and Felicia Jimenez. My name is Mike Pitts with explore.org. Happy Fat Bear Week, everybody, and may the fattest bear win.